Now, if you, if you read Thursday and Friday this week, I'm going to take you for a walk through a couple of people that you need to meet. Next week, the week before Christmas, uh, I'm again going to take you for a different kind of walk than, than you have most of the time for, for Christmas, okay? It's a Christmas thing, but I, I want you to see things that oftentimes in the Christmas story we just run over the top. You know, ever since I was a child, we had Christmas trees. We were told about Christmas. Ever since I went to start going to Sunday school, we were told the biblical story and all this kind of thing. So that's been in my head all my life. But I'm just discovering that there are a lot more things involved in that Christmas story than is the, uh, the average story that's told at Christmas. Yeah, really. Amen. Really. I mean, God had to plan for Mary. That's right. All right? So somewhere down the long line, he had to arrange all this ancestry mm -hmm. coming down the line, showing that Mary, as well as Joseph, that's were descendants place. of David. Yeah. He did not want any argument with regard to to his son being an heir to the throne of King David. So all of this is, is not new stuff. You know, or I don't think it's new. I don't know how God plans things. Maybe, maybe well, he's not limited like we are. Amen. He, he knows everything and does everything. And, and we have to sort of figure out what's going on. <laughs> and so Esther said to me the other day, you're more a teacher in this than you are a preacher. That's all right. <laughs> Teach on. Well, because when I teach a course, that's my responsibility to cover every detail of that course so that the kids taking it will have some remembrance of why they took the course. Amen. <laughs> and and uh, but what I'm getting at here is It isn't enough to know facts. That's it. You can know all the facts there are, but not know Jesus. Amen. Yes. And the important thing is to know this one who was born the king of the Jews. To know him. Not, not to know about him. And, and let, me, let me insert something here. Because it's found in our Christmas carols and it's found in a lot of other places. His name is not Christ. That's right. That's right. The it's proper Jesus. title is Jesus the Christ. Yes. yes. Not Jesus Christ. Jesus the Christ. Amen. All right? And then the importance is his name, Jesus. Because that's the name whereby we get salvation. Yes. It's his name. It's not his title. It's his name. And, and, and what... And what God, I believe, is wanting us to get focused on is God doesn't want to just call you a hey you. Amen. He knows Juan by name. He knows John by name. He knows Donna by name. When he wants to talk to you, he talks to you by your name. He gets your attention somehow, and he talks to you. Because he's God, and he doesn't want to just talk. You follow me? Yes. And, and so... Let me ask you another question. Well, let me ask you a question. Is, is worshiping Jesus the main purpose of your life? Yes. Now, remember, these people went there with one thing in mind, to worship the king of the Jews. Now, what's the number one issue in your mind? Do you find yourself just walking along and all of a sudden worshiping him? Yes. The important thing is that we understand that we understand that our whole purpose in life is to worship the king. Amen. Because if we worship the king, he's going to do supernatural things. Yes. He'll move mountains. Yes, he He'll do all kinds of things. Because he's the king and can do it. 
And what he wants from us is our worship. He wants us to get so focused on him, on him, that he makes the decisions and we just carry them out. Because if we'll do that, we'll discover that we'll have a life that'll be victorious. Now you're preaching. <laughs> I have to live with that. <laughs> That's good. It's a wonderful. <laughs> and then another thing that, which I think is up there on the wall, is uh, what what kind of gifts do you bring to the king? What kind of gift? Do you bring to the king? Yeah, really. Remember the little boy that just had a couple of fish and, and a little bit of bread? Mm -hmm. And his disciple said, what's that to feed a multitude? Mm -hmm. Jesus said, just bring that. I'll take care of it. What he wants from us more than anything else is our worship. Yes, yes. yes. He wants us to get so focused on Hallelujah. him. Yes. That every decision we make is based on Him. Not what we think is right, but on Him. Hallelujah. He wants our worship so that it, it flows spontaneously. It isn't something that we wait till we get to church on Sunday morning in the worship service. Yes. Only in the worship service will we worship. But that worship is just singing. That doesn't mean I'm really presenting anything. Amen. You, you understand what I'm getting at? Oh, yes. These kings that came, they came with gifts that were appropriate for a king. Now, when Esther and I were going to meet the Queen of England, we had to go through a course. How to dress. Esther had to go to Miami to get a hat. <laughs> Couldn't go into the presence of the Queen without a proper hat. And, and, and we discovered that we couldn't start the conversation. If she didn't say hi, we didn't say hi. And, and, and we didn't stick out our hand until she reached out her hand. And we went through this whole course of how you, re, re, how you act when you are with a king or a queen. Well, I believe that's the same thing that God wants. He wants us never to get Jesus so common that he is not the king. Amen. Yeah, really. We have to keep that focus on him. As someone so special, yes. Yes. so special, so yes, different, yes. that the time you spend with him is wonderful time and exciting time. And you leave that time with him with something different in the way you think or the way you feel. or But something happens because you've been with the king. Yes, yes, I would say. Yes. But when you go to the king, you have to bring an appropriate gift. Now, he doesn't need silver and gold and frankincense and myrrh. Amen. What he wants is your love and your love. attention. He wants you to be so committed to him, so committed to him, that that's the important gift that you bring to him. It isn't just money. So some people have that feeling that they can buy their way into the kingdom. You don't buy your way into the kingdom. You enter the kingdom because you're a worshiper. Yes. And because yes. you're a worshiper, yeah. you have access to the king. Mm. You know, I, I did playing around with this. I did some more research just for the fun of it. If I didn't bring the right appropriate gift to the king, I couldn't go to him. If when I arrived at the palace, even if it were by invitation, if I did not bring an appropriate gift for that king, I would never see him. Follow me? Amen. So what's the appropriate gift to Jesus? Well, first of all, you give him your life. And really, that's an act of his kindness and mercy more than it is our generosity. He takes us just the way we are. And that's what he gives us back that makes us something. But it's understanding that once we start walking with him, it's not an up and down thing. You just walk with him. You don't get angry and quit. You follow me? Amen. Because it's so important that we understand 
and it's the way I worship him. It's the way I give him access to my life, to my thinking, to my planning, that he governs that more than I do. It's, 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 it's got to be that kind of devotion out of a sense of their, out of a pure heart. And uh, my closing question up there is, is my life pleasing to King Jesus? Not do I think I'm presenting him a pleasing life, but does he think or does he feel that my life is an appropriate gift to, to him? Now that's where, you know what happens there? It's where you have to get past thinking what may be appropriate for somebody else to give to Jesus. And don't buy that. It's God, what would be appropriate for me to give to you, to have a relationship with you that will last the rest of my life? What do I give? And you know, that was another thing that was very interesting to me in traveling around the world like Esther and I have done, is to discover that in certain people groups, some things are valuable, that in other people groups are not valuable. And, and it's discovering what, you know, I, I went through my, I was straightening out some file drawers just the other day and ran across a book of the, one of the classes I taught in Kyrgyzstan and the students, they, everything in the book is in, is in Russian. <laughs> <laughs> I do not read Russian. <laughs> I do not speak Russian. I have no idea what they said in there. But looking at the pictures, I remember people. And I remember what they talked about with me and the things we discussed and felt as we talked. You know what? I feel that's the way God wants it to treat all of us. What may be accepting what I may accept give to him may be accepted by him for me but it may not be accepted for you to offer that same thing to him you, you, you follow me amen it's got to be such a personal thing such a personal because your relationship with him is personal yes it is it, it, it's not because of who your ancestry is it's between you and him so therefore, your relationship with him has to be a growing relationship between you and him. Now, that's why I find reading the Bible never gets old. Even though you know, I'm reading Ezekiel, and I have to be careful because if I'm not careful, I'll read it from my mind more than through my eyes because I've read it so many times and, and I come across these familiar scriptures and if I'm not careful and so I'm, this time I'm reading it in the message now when you read it in the message it's not like anything else you've ever read but th that's my purpose because I don't want to get into it so often in the same way, when you look at my office, I got a stack of NIV Bibles because for years I, that was the only one I read. But I got to the point where I didn't have to read it anymore. I turned the page 